afternoon. So, just thought I'd do a quick little video of a bayonet that I picked up. Um, I was at a show, let me see, it was about two months back. It was Living History UK Festival. Okay. And I picked up this bayonet. Now, <clears throat> it's this one here, okay, now it's a copy of the M7 bayonet, the M7 bayonet fits obviously the M16 rifles, okay, so it's the bayonet for this rifle here, okay. Uh, the official issue one, whoops, the official issue one looks like this, okay. It's an M7 bayonet, right? So that's it there. So when we compare the two of them together. There's a few differences. Let's see the handle. Right, the American one has got this textured grip. This one, which <clears throat> I don't know if you can make out the markings, uh, it's got UAE. So I take it that means United Arab Emirates. Goes on the other side. It's got this coat of arms. Size-wise and dimensions, the American bayonet. Let me see. It's very slightly bigger. Ever so slightly. So if you measure it, it is seventeen centimeters. And this one, just short of 17 centimeters, right? Let's see on the American one, this one here, uh, it's got this little claw hook, well, I don't know what you call it, but uh, the bayonet lug will fit in there. And the muzzle ring obviously goes around the muzzle. Okay, on this Emirates one, exactly the same. All right, and I'll show you the fit exactly the same way. All right, so <clears throat> there's the American one. All right, fits. Nice and snug. A little bit of a wobble, but it's the same with all bayonets. And then this one. A little bit of a wobble. Same as that one. Now, I paid, I think it was, I think it was 25 quid I paid for this. And I thought to myself, you know what, I've got an American one. I just thought I'd get another one to just add to the collection and just see the difference. Yeah. Obviously the scabbards are different. The American one comes in the uh, M8 A1 scabbard. This Emirates one comes in this weird it's marked M10. I don't know if it's legit or not. <clears throat> That's what it's marked. Um, but again, I don't know if this is a 
official issue because I'll show you something what I noticed so let's say you've got the, the bayonet hanging from the belt okay it's going to be using these little M1910 hooks right so it's going to be dangling from the belt like that right if you unfasten it right it just swing it just swings down right it's friction lock that holds it in place right so it's not going to just it's not going to fall out but the whole thing just swings down and the american one doesn't do that right again it's got the same hangers so it would dangle from the belt like that, or from the entrenching tool. You unfasten it, and it just stays there. You can't make it. You can't make it dangle like the other one. So, yeah. I mean, I bought this one. Uh, let me think. Very early 90s, probably in 1991, I think I got this. And I'm sure only paid about 35 quid for it. I think at the time it was Soldier of Fortune had a, like a bunch of them. You know, it had all, all that proper Vietnam surplus. Um, or that American surplus from the Vietnam War. Uh, whereas nowadays, yeah, you can still find these real ones, but price is going to be up. Uh... But yeah, this one here, I mean, there's no edge on it. You know, it's it's blunt, you know, no edge. There's a little bit of edge on this one. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know who made these. Um, obviously made for an export contract. But yeah. So these are the... Um, M7 type bayonets, I'll call it. It's not a, obviously an official issue one, but that's what you're getting for your money. And I think, if I remember right, it was Epic. Epic Militaria. That's where I got this. They had a trade stand at one of the shows, like I say, the, the Living History show. So that's where I got it. So hopefully found that interesting. I see it was in the back of my mind to talk about this and I just never got around to it. So <clears throat> just thought it was like a nice little addition to my deactivated uh, M16. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Enjoy.